What's up guys, my name is Michael. In this video, I have 12 iPhone settings that you should make sure you're using on your iPhone. So let's go ahead and jump into it. The first two have to do with the display on your iPhone. So if we go into settings, scroll down a little bit to accessibility, and then click on display and text size. You wanna scroll all the way down and make sure auto brightness is actually turned on. So not only can, like it says here, it can uh, extend the longevity of your display, but also when you are in direct sunlight, your iPhone display can actually get brighter when auto brightness is turned on. Now, some people don't like auto brightness because as you can see when I turned it on there, it dimmed my display significantly. So it is a little bit aggressive in uh, indoor scenarios, but if you have auto brightness turned on when you are outside in direct sunlight, your iPhone's display temporarily will be able to push up those levels of brightness uh, a lot higher than you could if you had auto brightness turned off. So uh, if you wanna get all those maximum nits out of your new iPhone, definitely make sure you have auto brightness turned on and as well as auto lock. So as you can see, my screen just dimmed there and that is a perfect transition into the next tip. So if we go into settings and we stay on the main screen and we click on display and brightness, the iPhone default out of the box is to auto lock after 30 seconds. I would recommend changing this either to uh, five minutes or never. I like how Android has a setting all the way up to 30 minutes because that is probably what I would choose. I don't know why the maximum Apple lets you do is five minutes. Maybe they could change that. But whenever I get a new iPhone, I always set this to either five minutes or never uh, just because the auto lock screen timeout is a little bit quick. So the next two tips actually have to do with 5G. So this is only if you have one of the new iPhone 12s this year. So go into settings and then tap on cellular and then we're gonna configure our cellular data options. So out of the box, uh, this is how it's set up. I'd recommend keeping 5G auto turned on if you wanna get the most out of 5G and always have it turned on whenever you can access a tower. Uh, turn 5G on like that. Just keep in mind this will drain your battery a lot faster so I'm gonna keep that to 5G auto. But next up is allow more data on 5G. So this is actually where uh, your iPhone can now take advantage of those faster speeds. So now you can actually download uh, bigger applications without limits. You can download movies faster. And this setting just allows your iPhone to maximize how much data throughput it can get when it's connected to a 5G tower. As you can see down here, it also allows for 1080p FaceTime calls when you are connected to a 5G network as well. So I definitely recommend turning a lot more data on 5G as it just lets you get more out of your iPhone. So next up has to do with charging. So this is how you can maximize your charging performance. Now, funny enough, in a video I made before this, uh, my recommendation was actually if you wanted to extend your battery life to turn this on. But now I'm telling you to turn it off if you want to maximize charging on your phone. So a huge disclaimer, turning this off uh, can damage and degrade your battery faster. But if you click on battery settings and then click on battery health, and turn off optimized battery charging, you can see you have the option to turn off until tomorrow or just completely turn off. So if you wanna hit turn off until tomorrow, uh, this is useful if you just wanna fast charge your iPhone as fast as possible. So I was wondering why my uh, new MagSafe charger uh, for my iPhone 12 wasn't charging as fast, and that's because the setting was turned uh, on. So I make sure I turn it off whenever I want to get the fastest charge possible. But when I don't need to charge my phone fast, say for example overnight, I just turn the setting back on. The next setting is for those of you who use Apple Music. So if you go into settings and then click on music, out of the box, your iPhone is restricting you for cellular data. So say for example, you get in your car and you wanna stream some music on your new iPhone and you find out you can't on Apple Music because streaming over data is uh, turned off out of the box, which is so dumb. So make sure you turn uh, streaming on and downloads on over cellular. And also if you have 5G or you have a higher limit data plan, you can also turn on high quality streaming, which is going to give you uh, the highest possible quality from Apple Music, the same streaming quality you'd get when you're on Wi-Fi. So like I said, if you have unlimited data or a very high limit data plan, uh, I would recommend turning on high quality streaming just to get the most out of Apple Music. And also still inside music settings, which is so frustrating that Apple doesn't turn it on by default, is automatic downloads. So as soon as you add a new song into your library, you want that to be downloaded, especially on these new iPhones now, the, the pros that come with 128 gigs, it doesn't matter if it's downloaded taking up space. So turn on automatic downloads. I don't know why that isn't turned on by default, but uh, if you turn this on, any new song where you tap that plus icon to add it to your library, it'll automatically also be downloaded to your phone as well. 
Next up, this one has to do with photos and cellular data. So if you have an unlimited data plan on your new iPhone 12 with 5G, for example, um, let's, let's say you want your photos to always be updated when you get home. So let's say you had a long day of shooting and you have a whole bunch of videos and photos, and when you get home, you wanna view them on your Mac. Well, out of the box, your iPhone is not going to upload those photos to the cloud uh, unless you're on Wi-Fi. So if you go into, not camera, if you go into photos and then scroll down to cellular data, you can turn on unlimited updates. So I'm happy that Apple does give you this option. This can eat up a lot of data if you're not careful. So I'm not going to turn this on. But if you do turn this on uh, and you keep it on in the background, if you take a 4K 60 FPS HDR video, and you're connected to 5G, your iPhone is going to upload that video to the cloud. It is going to eat through your data plan and it's also gonna eat through your battery life. So if it's important to you to have all of those photos and videos you took instantly be updated to the cloud in case, I don't know, you lose your phone or you drop your phone or something like that, uh, turn on unlimited updates. But uh, for most people, it's gonna eat through your battery life and it's gonna eat through your data plan. So uh, most people can keep it off, but it is a nice feature, uh, at least to know that it's there. Next up, we are inside Face ID. So I didn't go through the entire settings main screen because I had to enter my passcode. But once you get to this screen, uh, there are a couple settings I'd recommend turning on. So require attention for Face ID. I'd recommend turning this off. Uh, face ID is still going to be secure. It's still going to recognize your face and your face only. Uh, only what this toggle does is it makes it so you have to be looking directly at your iPhone. So if you're glancing a little bit to the left or right or above or below your iPhone, your iPhone is still going to unlock if you have this turned on. Whereas if you have it turned off, you have to be looking directly at your iPhone screen. So I usually recommend turning this off and face ID will be a little bit faster. Also, if you have not set up an alternate appearance, there will be a button right here in blue text that says set up alternate appearance. Now I've already done that. That's why my button says reset face ID, but face ID lets you actually add it to faces. So if you wear glasses or a really big hat, for example, that changes your look completely, I'd recommend adding a second appearance to face ID, uh, which can make it recognize your face a lot faster. The next setting is inside phone. And once again, I'm not able to go through the whole main settings page because my phone number is literally right up here. So I don't want to show you, but once you get into the phone settings inside the settings app on your iPhone, obviously silence unknown callers, this is a great feature. So I just got a new number and the person that had this number before had so many robo calls. So I always turn silence unknown callers on. And uh, now I'd say 95% of the calls I get where I don't recognize the number, it just ends up being a robot. So I'd recommend turning this on. Uh, if it is an actual phone call, they can leave you a voicemail or send you a text. Uh, I'd say so many of the phone calls I get nowadays are just robots and ads. So uh, turn this on and uh, your life will be a lot easier. This next one is probably my favorite feature in this list. If you go into settings and then tap on messages, and then tap on text message forwarding, you can choose devices that you want your iPhone to send text messages to. So as you know, you can have iMessage in the cloud, but you can also have text messages in the cloud with this feature. So let's say I wanna receive text messages on my iMac, I can just turn that on from Michael's iMac. And now whenever I get a text message, not just an iMessage, it'll also pop up on my iMac as well. And you can turn it on for as many Apple devices you have connected to your Apple ID. And finally, our last setting on this list, I know when you guys hear this, for those of you who are waiting, you're going to breathe a huge sigh of relief. But finally, the App Store on iPhones now lets you download apps that are over 200 megabytes. You can see here, if you go into App Store settings and click on App Downloads, this is the default setting, ask if over 200 megabytes. But now because of 5G, I guess, and Apple thinks that people are gonna be using more data not like they didn't before with LTE. But I guess now Apple decided that this year is important with 5G to now finally always allow applications, no matter how big they are, to download over cellular data. So if you want apps, uh, very large applications that you download uh, to be put on your phone when you are out and about and on cellular data, I'd recommend turning on always allow. Big downloads over 5G and just cellular data in general can eat through your battery life. So keep that in mind if you are downloading a big application, but it is just so nice that this setting is finally here. I can't tell you how many times I wanted to download say a game and I was on data and my iPhone just wouldn't let me because I wasn't on Wi-Fi and I had the data to do it. Like I had enough data on my plan. There was just that really arbitrary rule uh, built into my iPhone, but now uh, that is no longer there. So thank you, Apple.
If you watching right now made it to the end of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you are not already. Uh, please subscribe to my channel and also drop a like on this video if you found it helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have been enjoying my videos recently. My name is Michael. I'll see you in the next video.